How long should you rest between sets to get your best possible results and not spend forever in the gym? Well, up until relatively recently, this is a real confusing subject with all kinds of different views and opinions, but I think that us at Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems, we've got a sort of pretty objective way to determine rest times. Mind you, it only gets you into the average pretty decent zone of how long you should be resting, but it's way better than random and way better than no information at all. So let's take a look at how to figure out how long you should rest between sets in three distinct training goals, hypertrophy, putting on muscle, strength, something like powerlifting, or power, for example, doing your best weightlifting movements close to a meet or training for peak jump ability and so on and so forth. So for hypertrophy, before, for any of these actually, before we figure out how long to rest, we have to ask a sort of philosophical question, not really any deep philosophy here, why are we resting? What is the purpose of a rest period? As people say, do you rest two minutes or one minute or three minutes? The immediate question back to them is, you know, what are we resting for? It's kind of like the analogy here is, you know, someone's like, you know, what's the best color of camouflage? Well, what is the purpose of camouflage? To hide you. Okay, so the next answer to that is, what, what does the environment look like? If it's like pink and purple weird psychedelic zone, you should probably wear, wear a pink and purple weird psychedelic suit. That doesn't look like regular camel, but it fits the exact criteria. So for hypertrophy, what is the purpose of hypertrophy training? It is to challenge the local musculature that we're training, not the whole system, we don't care about that. The way hypertrophy happens is a hugely disproportionate amount of it occurs in the last five reps or so approaching muscular failure. Sets between five reps close to failure and 30 reps close to failure show approximately the same hypertrophy, at least in the short term. So if you have a set that you're doing that is limited by the local muscle and it gets into that five reps or closer to failure range for at least five repetitions, right? Then that is a check mark, good, effective set that causes a robust amount of hypertrophy. So for example, if you rest just long enough to be able to crank out one rep and then you can't do any more, gee, you know, one rep is just not gonna get you that much more growth. But if you rest long enough to where you can have 10 good reps limited by the muscle itself. So when you're failing, it's not that you're out of breath, that you're super tired, it's that your muscles just won't contract anymore. And someone says, you should have rested longer because you could have gotten 15 reps. Gee, you know, there really isn't any hypertrophy difference between 10 reps and 15 reps if the local muscle is limiting. So the first checklist we have to check to make sure are we recovered enough to do another set is, is the local muscle and nerve complex able to perform at least five good reps for us? limited by its own abilities. If that's a check mark, we move on to the next one. Is the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, limiting our ability to go close to failure at the local target muscle? So for example, if your uh, central nervous system limits your ability to contract your bicep, you might feel like your bicep is totally good to go, but you're just so tired, you have very poor mind-muscle connection. For example, if you don't rest long enough, you might be, you know, your muscles, your biceps might themselves be ready, ready to go. There's not a ton of lactic acid buildup, but that's really how you know if you can do another good five reps. If you shake your muscles out and they feel relatively fresh, there's not a ton of lactic acid buildup, they're not crampy, they're not weird, and you think, okay, I can do five reps. If your central nervous system isn't recovered, you might feel just the burden of total fatigue. You ever look at a curl bar and you're like, my muscles are ready to go and your training partner's like, you ready? And you're like, ugh, you just get this feeling, ugh, I don't even wanna pick this up. There's no way I'm gonna try hard enough to actually get to my biceps. I need a longer break to get my psychology together. So a real imprecise but nonetheless valuable way to see if your CNS is recovered is, do you have that gut fortitude to go again? Do you truly in your heart of hearts feel that you have strength to push your muscles as far as they need to go? Or is it your mind that's going to give up before the muscles give up? So once you know, okay, I'm good and strong, I feel ready to do this, you check that CNS box. The next box you wanna check, there's four total boxes, by the way, we've already checked two, is cardiorespiratory fatigue. Are you still <laughs> breathing super heavy? And will that stop you on your set before your local muscle failure is reached or close to it? Or do you have enough cardiorespiratory sort of rebound in order to let the muscles themselves be challenged? For example, if you're squatting and you take 10 second breaks between sets of 20 in the squat, 
Your quads are not gonna fail you in that second set. Your lungs will fail you. You're just not gonna be able to breathe enough air, blow off enough CO2, and you're gonna have to rack. And <gasps> it's a great cardio workout. Nobody's saying it's not, but it's a very poor hypertrophy workout because your local muscles have this much stimulus to collect, and you collect this much, and then your lungs give out, and you leave a lot on the table. Lastly, our synergist muscles. Another really good example here is the bent over row. Let's say you're bent over rowing and your lats are totally healed and your back is totally healed, you're not breathing super heavy, you feel nice and strong, and uh, you're ready to go, so to speak, but your forearms are still tired. Your grip isn't as strong as it's gonna be. You need a couple more seconds or a couple more minutes to let your grip relax. Why? Because if you start bent rowing and your grip is the limiting factor, your lats and your rhomboids might be six reps reps away from failure locally, but your grip is one rep away from failure. You do another rep, you have to drop the barbell and someone's like, hey, yeah, it was a good workout for your back, how your lats really failed. You're like, my lats didn't fail, my grip failed. Same thing in the squat with your spinal erector muscles. If you can't stay upright in the squat, your quads might not even be limiting you, your back is. So in order to get all four checklists, once we get all four checklist items, then we're ready to do another set. Here's an example. Calf raises, let's go through this. How long does it take for your calves to wash out their lactic acid and be ready to do another productive five reps? I don't know, five seconds, 10 seconds? You do calf raises, ah, 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 it hurts. 10 seconds later, they feel pretty good. What about central nervous system? I mean, for God's sake, it's not that hard to do calf raises. It doesn't impinge your ability to train. Central nervous system fatigue is basically not a limiting factor. Cardiorespiratory fatigue, if you get out of breath doing calf raises, you need to go to the hospital immediately, stop being in the gym, so not a realistic factor. And then what are the synergists for calf raises? I mean, a properly assembled machine, there are no synergists. Like the thing connects right into your hips and you press right off your hips. So it turns out when local limit is the only limit and the muscle is small and very well vascularized like the calves, a logical amount of rest is 10 seconds. After 10 or 15 seconds between calf exercises, you can do more and more sets and that's totally fine. Can you rest longer? Yes. Is there any distinct benefit to resting longer? Probably not, you're just pissing away time, right? So it can be 10 or 15 seconds between calf raises. Now let's take an exercise on the other end of the spectrum. Squats, squats for sets of 10 to 15 reps. Your quads, maybe 10 or 15 seconds, 20 seconds because they're bigger muscle. After squats, your quads are ready to do another hard set of five reps, no problem. Problem is, your central nervous system is trashed. You are super fatigued, super tired. You look at the bar and it's bending, you're like, ugh, get that away from me, I need minutes. Your cardiorespiratory system, <laughs> you're breathing super heavy, you're not gonna be ready for another several minutes. And what about your uh, ancillary muscles, the synergist muscles, you know, your lower back might be so pumped and so fatigued, you need to lay down in order to get rid of lactic acid between sets of squats. That is why some people need to take five minutes or more between hard sets of high rep squats to recover all of those other factors. How do you know how long you need to rest between those two? You just go through the checklist. As soon as you're done with a set, you rest a little bit and you start going through the checklist. Am I locally recovered? Am I centrally, or am I, uh, is my CNS recovered? Am I ready and motivated to go train again? Is, are my lungs keeping me back from this or is it really the local muscles? And are my synergists ready? And as soon as all four boxes check with the green check mark, you're ready to go do another set. You can wait longer if you want, but you're just kind of wasting time for no reason at that point. So that's hypertrophy. Strength. How do we do rest periods for strength? It's very similar, except the purpose of hypertrophy training, the purpose of the next set. How do you know you have a good set? Is to hit programmed weight and reps that you have decided are taking you where you need to go in your strength development. So if your next set is a set of three reps at 87.5% of your one rep max, how recovered are you is recovered enough to hit those three reps at 87.5% of your one rep max. Really, really straightforward. So. With, hyper with strength, it's a little bit of a different checklist, a lot of the same items. The first part is, is your CNS ready to hit those weights, uh, sets and reps, right? So are you, do you feel strong yet? Because after a set of three, you don't feel strong for a couple of minutes, then you feel strong again. But after we've checked that main one, we have to look back at cardio again. Okay, I feel ready to lift, is my breathing return to normal? Mostly that's gonna be yes, unless you're really out of shape or it's sort of sets of five in the deadlift might really win you or something like that. Then lastly, you check your local muscles and synergists to make sure they're not keeping you. So for example, if you're doing squats and you did a set of three, your quads might feel pretty good, you might feel where you're ready to go, but you know your lower back could really use a bit more rest because it's still fatigued. When you can check that you're psychologically and centrally prepared to
to lift, when you can check your cardiorespiratory fatigue is not limiting that ability, and when you can check that either your local muscle fatigue or synergist fatigue is not limiting that ability, you're ready to go again. And there can be really, really different times of rest. For example, close grip benches. I mean, it can be done for sets of three or five. For strength, how long do you need to rest? Well, how, how ready are you to close grip bench after you've done it? After a minute, you might be like, well, I feel like I got another hard set in me. It's not that hard of an exercise. What about cardio? I mean, geez, you know, if you run out of breath on close grip bench or sets of fives, again, you have another different kind of problem. You're probably not cardio limited on that. And then how soon are your triceps and chest and front delts ready to go after your last set of, I mean, how much lactic acid do you even sum up on a set of five close grip bench? You might be ready to, muscularly to go, you know, five or 10 seconds after to do another one or two reps and, you know, for full creatine restoration, so on and so forth. So you know, another three or five, you might need a minute, minute and a half, so on and so forth. So when all of those things are checkmarked, you know, a minute and a half could be a totally good amount of time to rest between close grip benches. Now, what about the other extreme example? Sets of five in the deadlift. Holy crap. How long until you get your mojo back for your CNS? It could be five minutes. What about your cardio? It could be a little while because, gee, sets of five in the deadlift, especially if you stop and restart them and you're a bigger person, you're lifting a lot of weight, gee, you can run out of breath doing that stuff. And then, of course, local muscular, your back can take a huge hit. Your lower back might need a couple of minutes to let all the lactate uh, run through and to really, really recover so that it doesn't limit your actual strength performance individually on the next set. So you could go for a minute 30 or something like that on a close grip bench all the way up to six to eight minutes for sets of five in the deadlift, which is a very common practice with power lifters if you've ever seen folks like that train. Lastly, and this is actually probably the simplest one, is power training. Research has consistently showed that if your peak power output drops off to lower than 90%, right? Oh, sorry, if, you're, if your power output in a set is less than 90% of your peak power output, you're actually no longer training for power, you're training for something else, strength or endurance or hypertrophy. So you wanna make sure you're within 90% of peak power. How do you know that? Well, a lot of times is you can use potentiometers and devices that you have established a peak power either that day or earlier in training or a month ago, and you know when you're recovered is when you can hit another set of reps at 90% or above. It is a learning curve there, but you're gonna get really good figuring out your rest times from there. If you don't have that sort of objective criteria, you treat it pretty much identically to strength, where you have, you know, I have to do another set of two in the snatch coming up. When is my CNS gonna be ready to produce as much power as I can? It's a learned skill, but you'll figure it out. When is cardio not a limiting factor? And are my local muscles no longer limiting me? When you can check all of those, so that you can hit your next set at a very, very high velocity of force, then you're doing a really, really good job. Again, some feedback there and using potentiometers is a really cool thing. It's not required, but it definitely helps with power training, especially if you're doing jumps or something or sprints. You can really tell when power output is down and when you need more rest, right? The thing with power, if you take a little bit longer of a rest, there's no downside and you know you don't have to rest forever anyway. It's like another 30 seconds or a minute's not gonna destroy your daily routine. But if for strength you rest a little not enough, you might have to try harder on that set than you usually would, which has its downsides, but it's not the end of the world. With power, if you rest just not long enough and your power output drops below 90%, that's literally junk volume at that point. It's just not making you better. So for power training, err on the side of longer. For the others, just go by the criteria. When you can checklist all the boxes for rest time, you're ready to go and it's time to do another set. Folks, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, check out all the links we've posted for you in the description. And if you want more information on this exact topic, look for the scientific principles of hypertrophy training due out at some point in 2020.